Okay, so I just want to talk about this model right now uh, and, you know, like in terms of building from a photograph, like in ratio. Now, um, if you want to build a, like a completely scale model of this particular um, extractor, then you would draft a drawing and you would get measurements of distances and heights and everything. If that's the luxury that you have, I, I chose not to do that for my own personal reasons. So... And furthermore, like, I wasn't even going to build this model, but I decided that I wanted it in, and despite the fact that I had inadequate space, I needed to make compromises or use artistic license or draftsman license or whatever to make it work. Now, as you can see here, is that these legs are look longer than these ones in the photo. And that's for two reasons. One is, is I included these, these extensions as the concrete footings here. And I, and also encompass these extenders. Okay. See, so that's why it's, it's, it looks taller in the actual model than it does in the photograph. So those are the reasons for that. Um, am I happy with that? Yeah, I'm okay with that. Except now I'm thinking, geez, I wish I would have maybe built these first or, you know, had those in mind. But it is what it is. And I'm not going to sweat that. Like, you know, I just want to move on. So, like I say, this is not, like, this is for me, you know. I, I can be as lazy as I want to because it's my layout and it's my build and I'm having fun with it. So, what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to use these uh, shorter footings I uh, made from maple, like, shorter blocks that are not obviously nearly as high right okay okay so since i'm on the footing phase i should uh mention how i cut these out and why i use maple i think i might have mentioned that um, i like to use uh, maple um, I, in fact i've used maple quite a bit like in film i used lots of it for building model parts it's just fantastic stuff because it's so dense um, it's a little tough to mill uh, for the faint of heart but uh, you can do it with a razor saw like these small parts like i find like you just clamp this to the bench just draft the squares on the bench and then i cut that center out first like that all right um, and I want those two blocks, so I just cut it in the center here, like so. And then I slide my trusty little portable workbench here. Just clean them up with a sanding stick. And they take paint really well. That's the one beautiful thing about maple that I like, well, for model parts. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they uh, like, even if you just sand them and paint them a concrete color, they look good, you know, so. Okay, so just at this point, uh, I want to tell you that these are the little brackets for mounting the ladders. Uh, but it's also a good method to curve right angles. See that? As you just make marks every two millimeters. And then just put it on a corner, a piece of hardwood like that, and just nip the top through, as I showed. And it'll just curve nice, right? See? And then once you glue it in place, if you just Put a, just a thin stroke of glue across there and then when it dries just stroke it across and it'll go solid. Okay.
Okay, so we're getting to the mounting of the ladder stage now, which is getting close. Um, so I want to uh, show you another uh, good uh, package to have for uh, Evergreen, uh, if you're building your kit up slow, is number 293 angle. This is a good all-around um, size, and then there's uh, 291, 291, 292, 293 are three really good ones to have. Should cover just about everything. Uh, they do have large ones, but I find that these ones make uh, really nice brackets. Like, like here, you just cut them at two mil, All right? Just mark them at two mil, and then cut them on a the corner of a piece of wood. Like that, as I showed, I think, earlier. And then what I've done here, as you can see, so the ladders, uh, this is just press fit in there, but so I just lay on like the brackets, just mark a line and then just lay them on one side. And then I'll just lay the ladder in. Fiddly little things, eh? And like the ladders will be a little bit wavy, you know, like sometimes depending how nice you jig them up. These ones I rushed a bit, but that's okay. They'll straighten up nice if you get the mounting hard points straight because they're quite flexible. And then those will get mounted on there like that. And then with uh, on the tank, I used uh, number 293. These were 291, a little bit smaller. These are 293. And with these ones here, um, you can bend them too, right? Like once they're dry. Like that's the nice thing again about evergreen plastic. It's a soft styrene, so it like it'll bend a long ways before it breaks. So that's nice. So I can basically line these ladder brackets up like that. See, based on that line, and then I'll lay that ladder in there. Cut it to, to length later, and then I'll. I'll just straighten up the ladder and then tack glue it in place and then she's good to go. Okay, so I think uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm not going to put brass railings here. Uh, I'm going to use plastic. I'll probably use brass on the top of the cylinder here, like I initially planned, because that will be probably subject to more hits maybe, but I'll probably regret it. But I'm not going to do it here because there's a lot of real scale dimensional stuff here, and I don't want to pack out the inside for, for mounting brass pins. And I don't like to see a brass onto plastic. I like to drill out whatever the model is when I use mixed media like metal to plastic. That's why with the top here they're drilled out quite deep. I can run rods in there and I'll probably do it that, the top for sure in brass. And I do like the uh, you know the five mil brass rod. But in this case with the railings uh, the way they are like on this drawing, right? Or not drawing. To me, they're like drawings, I guess. But <laughs> uh, these railings here, they sort of they're fixed to the side. See, they're welded on, and then there's a thin plate along here. And I really want to add that thin plate. I like that thin detail. Wherever you can show a thin scale metal, it will, will help trick the eye into other stuff that might be, you know, have a facade nature to it. Right, like ladders and railings and things can really make a model pop. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use plastic. Uh, I've done it before, I regretted it, but uh, that's what I'm going to do. It's not a lot of work here. And then this will be plastic as well, just like the barge slip slabs and piers, which is pretty rigid. So, okay. 
And so instead of using 20 thou rod, I'm going to use 25 thou, which is uh, 0.64 millimeter opposed to 50 millimeter. This is more closer to the 5 mil brass rod. So, but uh, this will be fine. Okay, so uh, I got these railing posts in now, okay, and I just want to show you a little tip for uh, those of you that may not know this, but uh, so I want to cut these to exactly four feet high, or 36, or whatever the standard is. The standard's not one set rule, it's, there's a minimum and a maximum for safety railing height, but in this case I'm going to go with four feet, and because um, there's always a variance, like this rim right here, like you see right here, the actual railing seems to go a little bit higher, but I don't know if this distance here is exactly accurate to the prototype anyway. But So four feet, um, I'm going to choose to go with. So what, what I do is I just took a piece of uh, number 223, 332 tube, right? Okay, and then these railing stanchions or posts are 25 thou, okay? So I want to cut them all exactly the same height, so they're mounted on here. So just slide this over top like that, okay, just like that, and then I just take my nippers and just nip it off, and then slide it over to the next one. And if you're doing a long run, well, this is a great way to, uh, you know, to get all your posts all at the same height. Now you don't have to snip them off yet. You can use a copper. You can use copper uh, spacer like this, a little copper tube, and then cut a whole bunch of them, and then lay up four, ex for example, and then lay the, you know, the actual um, top rail like this. I'll show you. So just to say, this is copper, and then you put another one on the end there, or on all four, and then you just lay this plastic rail on the edge of it and then put a drop of glue but then you can't get the copper pipe off right <laughs> you ever done that before anyway so yeah you can use copper with brass or copper with plastic uh, to get the height it's up to you but i just had this kicking around so um it, it'll work great Okay, so I just want to uh, stay on this topic for a bit because I think it's important because I bet a lot of people wonder how to do nice fine scale railings. 
And I just want to say that you can do them in brass or plastic. And if you do them in plastic, um, you know, they might not take a hit as well as brass, but they are pretty tough if you do them right. Like what I also do, like when I make this right angle, you can see, okay, a couple of things I want to point out here. Here's the post I'm going to. Here's the corner. And here's the next post. And in between this is the ladder, right? So this will get trimmed off here. Make the piece longer. Make it proud. You know, I talked about this philosophy, this, this scratch building philosophy. Like, some would disagree with it, and that's fine. Like, um, if I'm building in half inch to the foot scale or quarter inch to the foot from a drawing, then I might cut pieces exactly as per drawing. But in this particular scale, an HO or, or even an N, uh, you want to cut the pieces larger so you can handle them, right? Like, you'll see what I mean when you get into it. Because all you have to do is, is once you glue it in place like this, when it's dry, you just nip it off. And it's completely flush. Right? Like, what if the piece is a little bit smaller? Like, sometimes when we measure things, like, we'll measure, like, in millimeters, let's say. And then we measure the, the space where it goes, and it doesn't match. It's either too large or too small. And that's why I do that. And somebody asked that, you know, about that type of thing, about nipping off excess, even though some might think it's wasteful, but I don't think it is at this scale because I use all the scrap. And somebody also made a good point. They put it into their, their solvent to make a kind of, you know, filler. So um, I call it total, sub, total subtraction where uh, you, you subtract the part to make it fit after it's glued in place, okay? That's the method that I generally use because it makes it so much easier. Uh, rather than trying to fit a, an exact size part like this that's this fiddly. And then also, um, lay it down flat and just sand, like just drag a piece of sandpaper across like the side that you're going to glue to. Why do I do that? Well, because it adds um, like grain and texture to the plastic and it makes for a much stronger weld in the same way that you would do the same with brass. You know, you sand brass down, you, you knock the shiny coat off so when the solder grabs, it has a stronger bite. And it's the same way with this plastic. You wouldn't believe how much better the bond is when you sand both surfaces of this particular evergreen plastic and then put a dab of solvent in. Man. It's, it's, you know, 10 times, like it seems like it's 10 times the integrity than if it's just got a shiny coating on it. In the same way that how you sand the surface to make a pencil mark, okay, on plastic. Like if you don't, it doesn't leave a pencil mark very well. So there's a coating or something on it. And if you knock it off and then you add solvent, it grabs way better, right? And you get a stronger weld and you'd be, su be surprised how strong... Um, you know, plastic okay. you'd be surprised how strong plastic is like when you weld it you know what I mean um, just try it so I'm going to add, now that it's tacked on there I'm just going to put a little bit of a dab there and then I'm going to grab the sharp edge of my blade so I can grab a hold of it like this. So it won't slip off and just push down. Because there's a type of uh, mushroom effect. I'll just show you here on the workbench here. Just let me just show you that. Which is a characteristic that I know a lot of people that do this kind of thing can identify. So if you have like, uh, uh, if you're gluing two ends together like this, let's say. Or two surfaces. You put the solvent in here and you push down on it so that it mushroom, the plastic mushrooms out a bit. Like this. You know, it just mushrooms out a little bit. That's an ideal weld when that happens. And then you just come along and scrape that off, cut it off, or just sand it, and there's no need for filler. Okay? Okay, so just to close up this railing procedure here, um, there's a, a mid rail here, about halfway in between. So rather than use 25 thou or even 
20 thou, which you could do. You can run it across and put another bend in it and run a corner around. Uh, but then it would be a little bit proud. And I'd rather do that than to put individual pieces in between, like it would be on the prototype if it was fabricated in the shop. So this is where you make compromises or cheats uh, as a trade-off for strength. Because, you know, this is going to happen, right? Hopefully your hand won't. But it's always good to build in a little bit of strength. Like in this case, because you're all over the model and stuff. But So rather than use um, this rod, which would look good too, I'm going to use this flat bar 10 by 20 or strip. I really love this stuff. I probably go through more of this than anything because it's just got that nice fine scale to it. And it's, you know, uh, has a lot of uses. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to tack. I'm going to run it straight across. Okay. And I'm going to tack it in place first. Remember how I talked about tagging one end first? And just get it to line up. And then I'm going to glue it here and here and here, just on the top. And then when it's dry, I'm going to fold this down to the next return. Okay. And then when I go to put the ladder in here, like one of these ladders, I'll take the best section out of here. There's a little bit of wobbliness, but that'll straighten out. But when I put this ladder in here, which I won't do yet because i got to put the footings on and it goes right to the ground. Uh, I'll just nip, like, or actually before I put the ladder on, is I'll just nip away the inner uh, pieces there. Like these end railing pieces here and then this inner piece. It's just that if you run it straight across rather than individual pieces, like you get a straighter run that way. Like that, see? Okay. Okay, so um, I'm going to mount this ladder, but I don't really like the way, like it fits in there nice. But it doesn't really, like the thing about this ladder, it's so delicate, like if all these mounting surfaces aren't exactly level, then the side of the ladder won't look right. So for some reason, this, the platform, maybe when I packed it out with the right angle here, um, it it uh, the you know the plane is uh, higher than these rails which I had to pack out anyway and which I'm glad I did because it beefed up these legs a bit so what I'm going to do is, is I just take uh, some 30 30 okay number 131 and uh, they're very tiny here I'll show you and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop in a small block I just cut some small little spacer blocks for the ladder to sit on. I might have to do each one individually, but there's a lot of times like these ladders, like these aren't my best ladders. Like I guess I was in a bit of a rush, but but they're not bad and um, and they're acceptable. But uh, I kind of rushed them in the jig and. Uh, but you can straighten them out uh, if you have enough hard points like this. Like, like uh, they straighten out really good. So, And, you know, ladders. Like, there's a ladder on the grain elevator that I did. Or I didn't add yet. And on the prototype, I was over there a while ago. The thing just looks like a piece of spaghetti. You know, I got like, I don't know, maybe a truck banged into it and just like I don't know but man I've seen ladders like industrial ladders on older structures boy they look abused and ratty looking you know they're not straight I think this will do it though this will get them uh Boy, what would you do without a number 11 blade? Eh? I build, this is my main tool for putting small parts and you just poke, pick up the piece. It's just, comes second nature after a while when once muscle memory takes over. Okay, so I think that'll, uh, I think that'll bring it 
uh, the ladder into a, 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 a more accurate horizontal plane. And uh, just have to watch the top, I guess. Always looks nice when things are sort of mounted a little bit away from, um, you know, beams and stuff, right? Yeah, I think that'll work. Wonder if I'll need to pack out that top rail. No, actually, that looks good. Yeah, okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. So what I'll do with this, though, is I was going to wait uh, to uh, before I mounted this ladder because you can see with the footings here see here and There's a solid rung and so I'll, I'll nip off the bottom of the ladder and I'll, uh, because my footings are only like this high Like there's uh, Very shallow footings uh, as I explained earlier. Uh, I can mount the ladder flush to the bottom here and then when I add the footings um, like these little blocks right here uh, that'll be okay. Okay, so uh, pretty much done now, um, except for this part here, the vacuum head. Uh, I did the railings like these uh, safety cage uh, off camera. They're just there's just no way I could film it because it was just too much of this. It just really like each one. It just like I couldn't like I couldn't focus, and because uh, these I don't normally build uh, you know safety ladders like this like with the hoops. It's all made from, uh, if you're really insane and as crazy as I am, then you'll uh, build the, uh, the hoops and the rails out of 10 by 20 thou, <laughs> number 100. Um, you know, you cut a length and you glue one side to each ladder, let it dry, and then you just loop it with tweezers or your hands and glue the other side and hope that they're all the same length and they all curve right. And then you run, there was five rails it's it sort of brings them in line. I mean, it's not perfect. Um, normally, I would cut a tube, larger tube, and then sand them thin. But that's quite finicky, though, too. And this is more fine scale, like these actual ladders. You can see, right? Okay, so let's close this puppy out. Um, so the turbine is done, or the vacuum canister on the top there, and normally uh, this pipe would run out the back like that because it was a further away from the building. But what I've done is, because it's closer and the scene's compressed, I'm going to run it, because I like this feature, uh, I'm going to run it on the side like this. Alright, so you'll see it nice there, going into the building. And then I'll show you how I'm going to deal with the footings. So I just cut these away. I trimmed some of them already. So uh, we'll just cut these footings away because uh, they're double plates anyway. So this is was was just temporary, right? Because we have these little maple concrete maple footings, which I'll ca on. Uh, this made a big difference, this uh, build plate, right, to hold it, the leg stand rigid together because, you know, it's got, it's not super strong this way. Okay, just cut it off the build plate, see. 
Okay, and then uh, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to be, these are a bit shorter obviously because I don't want the, it to get too high. So these will go on like this. Concrete footings. I put a lot of detail on the legs because I think that's something that um, is easy to kind of overlook, you know, like uh, I find that with bridges too, with the footings, you know, and uh, you know, we overlook that, but it's a detail that the eye tends to go to because when we look at a structure, you know, you go down and then if there isn't concrete footings there, then, you know, it kind of, you, you know, you feel something's missing, right? I'll just zoom out here. So, there you have it. The brewery extractor and uh, so now that it's pretty much done uh, we'll take it up and have a look uh, and see what she looks like on the layout in front of the brewery flat and we'll call her done.